Clear skies tonight. If you like cool, you're going to love the sleeping weather tonight. Low of 54 degrees, Alexa. And we had some picture perfect days, just one right after another. I feel like it can't get any better, Jeff. That's right. More coming up tomorrow as well. We'll have complete weather details straight ahead here on WVTT. News Roundup the United States is moving to increase embassy security in the Middle East and around the world after the attack that killed the U.S. ambassador to Libya and three staffers Tuesday. Renee Marsh reports from Washington, D.C. News of Ambassador Christopher Stevens' death, along with three others, set off a range of statements from symbolic to severe. The United States condemns in the strongest terms this outrageous and shocking attack. The sentiment crossed party lines. I join my colleagues in strongly condemning the murder of these innocent Americans. We condemn in the strongest terms this senseless act of violence. Ambassador Stevens was killed in a rocket attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya on Tuesday, the same day the U.S. embassy in Egypt was attacked. Libya says the crowd was angered by an online movie considered offensive to Islam, and Libyan officials condemned the crowd's actions. We apologize to the U.S. and to the American people and to the government and also to the rest of the world for what happened yesterday. President Obama says the attack will not break the bonds between the U.S. and Libya, though he underscored the seriousness of the situation. We will not waver in our commitment to see that justice is done for this terrible act. And make no mistake, justice will be done. President Obama later met with employees at the State Department, and U.S. officials say the U.S. has deployed a group of Marines to Libya to help secure facilities there. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney says the administration's response to the attacks has sent mixed signals. The attacks in Libya and Egypt underscore that the world remains a dangerous place and that American leadership is still sorely needed. The Obama campaign has accused Romney of launching a political attack in the midst of a diplomatic challenge. In Washington, I'm Emily Schmidt. With President Barack Obama and Mitt Romney in such a tight race, could a third candidate play the spoiler? As Joe Johns report, the Libertarian Party's Gary Johnson might pose that kind of threat. A penny. He's fiscally conservative and socially cool. In a new web video, Gary Johnson's campaign is marketing the libertarian presidential candidate to independent voters across the country. And depending on the amount of support he takes away from the major candidates in key states, Johnson is starting to look like a potential spoiler. He could help decide which party wins the White House, though he doesn't see himself that way. If it were reported tomorrow that I was at 5% of the national vote, the overwhelming reaction to that would be, well, who the hell is Gary Johnson? And that would be a good thing. He will be on the ballot in all 50 states come November as an alternative to Mitt Romney and Barack Obama. Or, as Johnson bluntly puts it himself, It's a vote between Tweedledee and Tweedledum, and um, I think I'm going to end up being that third voice. One problem, he's not there yet. Johnson is still not eligible in three states where there are legal challenges. One state that's safe for Republicans, Oklahoma, and two states that are hotly contested, Michigan and Pennsylvania. They just don't want a third-party candidate on the ballot. They just don't want to, uh, to give voters a choice. And here's one reason why Republicans could be concerned. In a new CNN ORC national poll, President Obama holds a six-point advantage over Mitt Romney when likely voters are just asked about the two candidates. But if you add Gary Johnson and Green Party candidate Jill Stein, the Obama lead increases to eight points. Romney drops three points with Johnson in the race. Though on CNN, Johnson said he'll poach from both sides. Put this to the question in four different states. Mm -hmm. And in two states, I take more votes away from Obama. Two states, I take more away from Romney. President Obama has to watch Johnson in states out west like Colorado and Johnson's home state of New Mexico. A recent poll in New Mexico showed the Obama advantage down to five points, with Johnson getting 7% of the vote. In the case of the Pennsylvania legal battle, the state Republican Party offers its reasons for fighting Johnson's candidacy. They think Democrats may be behind it. They gave CNN this statement. Not only are the Libertarian Party's papers riddled with errors, duplicate signatures, and blatant fraud, they raise concerns that President Obama and the Democratic Party are trying to add more candidates to the ballot because they know the vast majority of voters are looking for a new direction. Joe John, CNN, Washington. Teachers in Chicago striked 
for a third day earlier today. This after negotiations ended yesterday without either side expressing optimism that an agreement was at hand. Ed Payne reports. No breakthrough yet in negotiations. Thousands of striking teachers spent much of the day gathered outside the Chicago Public School System's headquarters. A union spokeswoman says they have a long way to go, with the union agreeing to just six of the 49 points in the school system's contract offer. She says they're fighting for their students and justice in education. Chicago's mayor cast the strike in different terms. This was a strike of choice, and it's the wrong choice for the children. Among other things, teachers are concerned about job security in the wake of a new program that evaluates them based on the standardized test scores of their students. I wish people would stop thinking that standardized tests tell us anything other than the socioeconomic background of our students. The school board says the issues can be resolved. We think the process is moving ahead and uh, we see no reason why uh, we won't solve this. Uh, and we have an urgency to get this solved because we think our kids ought to be in school. Chicago's first teacher strike in 25 years has left many parents scrambling to find alternatives for their children. I spent $240 in child care the last two days. I'm not happy about that. And I'm sure most parents can't afford that. I'm Ed Payne reporting. Mets lose. WVTT Sports up next. This is News Channel 25, WVTT.